Hello everyone, we are here at the Volcano Art Center for the Art and Anarchy Art Exhibition in conjunction with the Philosophy Pact Conference. We are here with Dr. Freeman, Professor of Philosophy at the University of Hawaii at Hilo. So Dr. Freeman, tell us about this art exhibition and its relationship with the Pact Conference. Okay, thank you, Ezra. So yes, I'm Tim Freeman. I teach philosophy at UH Hilo, and we host this philosophy conference, the Pacific Association for the Continental Tradition. We get to host that every four years. The other schools that host it are Seattle University, the University of San Francisco, and Loyola Marymount University. And uh, we did this in 2012. I helped put together an exhibition on the same theme of the conference. And this year, the theme of the conference was anarchy. What an interesting topic for this time. Most people just have an association of anarchy in the literal sense of the word, meaning disorder, without order, chaos. But it turns out that as a philosophical movement beginning in Paris in the mid 19th century, anarchism had a profound influence on the arts. And this begins when the anarchist philosopher Pierre-Joseph Proudhon defended his friend Gustave Courbet, the realist painter. His paintings were harshly criticized by the French Academy. They didn't meet the standards at, at the time, and he praised them for their social critique. So the anarchist philosophers were not against order per se. They were against oppressive order. They were utopian thinkers who wanted social harmony and also harmony with nature. One of the uh, anarchist thinkers of the time was a famous geographer in 1864 who said that continued exploitation of the earth is going to render it uninhabitable, which is certainly relevant today. Proudhon had defended Courbet's works and other anarchist writers praised artists who used their art as a means of social critique. And this led to an interesting debate with Emile Zola, who was then a young journalist, not the famous novelist yet. Zola criticized Proudhon's idea of art. He agreed with the anarchist critique of society, but he was critical of the idea of limiting art to a particular political agenda. And he suggested that artists should have the freedom to express their own creativity. So anarchism influenced the arts in these diverse ways. Some would go on to continue to do works that were about social critique in some way, and others would do works that were about breaking the boundaries of what art was and opening up the possibilities of what art could be. And so many of the works here, I think, do an excellent job of that. This work here behind Ezra, this one here, both of these by Hiroki Morinue, I think are a good example of that because I use this one on the right for the poster and the cover of the catalog, not only just because it's a beautiful image, but because people would, at first glance, not understand why it was connected with anarchy. It turns out if you pay close attention to them, the works are not only beautiful, but they're about climate change. They're about the burning of the Amazonian rainforest, which has been in the news lately. Apparently, the Amazonian rainforest is starting to produce more CO2 from the burning of the forest and contributing to the problem. And so his works are not only beautiful, but they draw attention to this problem. And many of the other works in here, some of them explore artistic creativity and breaking the boundaries of what art could be. Some of them explore this idea of spontaneous natural order, which the anarchist thinkers were also interested in. That influenced the French art critic, Felix Fenion, who invented the term neo-impressionism, praised works by Paul Signal and others. And part of it was this uh, spontaneous natural order. Signal's famous painting, in the time of harmony that shows people in social harmony and also harmony with nature. That painting was originally titled In the Time of Anarchy. So anyway, that's what these works are about. And so we invite you to come up and take a look.